Good morning and welcome to this reflection on Saturday the 15th of May. My name is Cathy Blair and I'm one of the vicars here at Walton-on-Thames and we're doing these special reflections for Thy Kingdom Come. This is um, from Ascension Day which was Thursday through to Pentecost Sunday which is the 23rd of May and we're doing these special reflections for this particular period which is called the Novena. You can pick up one of these booklets if you'd like to in St Mary's Church tomorrow on Sunday um, or you can download them um, from the website from, and there's a link on our website for that. So let's pray. Lord we thank you for your steadfast love for your people down through the ages and for us today and we pray that you would speak to us through your word. Amen. So this is called Day 2 and it's a, called A Rescuing God. It's Psalm 116 verses 5 to 9. But I'm going to read from verse 1. I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cause of death entangled me, the anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord, Lord save me. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, sorry, gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul. For the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. You know when on these programmes on TV where the house or the room has had a makeover and they show you the picture before and after? Well, I think this is a before and after psalm. And it's got a sort of um, satisfaction when you read it because you can see what, what the circumstances of the man were like before and after. Some st psalms, I suppose, start, uh, you don't get to find out whether, whether the, the psalmist is helped at all, but here we do. Um, so by the end, he is standing again in a place of stability restored. But that wasn't the case at the beginning. He was in deep trouble at the beginning. Verse 3, the cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. So this encapsulates the struggles and battles of life. And it's in times like this that we turn in our helplessness to God and find the way forward. It seems a very sensible thing to call on the Lord in distress. But sometimes for us, for me, I admit, it takes a long time before I think to call on God. Save me. And I wonder what it is that would stop us from coming to God. Sometimes we're just too busy and we don't think about it. Maybe it's the character of God Verse 5 talks more about the character of God. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. So this man's testimony is of God's faithfulness. But sometimes, maybe, we don't think of God as faithful. We maybe think God's irrational or can't be trusted or doesn't have our best interests at heart, that would stop us from coming to him. But God is faithful. I wonder if you can think of occasions when God's been faithful to you. Do we tell of the faithfulness of God? Maybe there's someone today who needs to hear from you that God is faithful, who needs to hear that God is good, that God is a rescuer, 
We're reminded, even through this psalm, of Jesus, the Son of God, who came into this world to embrace us as sinners and to set us free by dying on the cross. What is the story of God's love, promise, rescue and faithfulness in your life? I encourage us to be thankful for this. And is this something that you could share with someone? As part of Thy Kingdom Come last year and the year before, we took a piece of thread, uh, a cord or a piece of wool and tied it round our wrists. But beforehand, we tied knots in it, uh, maybe five knots for five people that we were praying for to come to know God's grace and love in their lives. If you've done that before, I wonder what's happened in the journey of those people towards God. And I encourage us to do it this year, whether for the first time or whether doing it again. Think of five people that you'd like to particularly pray for, that they would come closer to God, that they would know God's grace and love in their lives. So shall we pray? Lord God, we pray for courage to share our story. We pray for those who do not yet have a sense of God's care for them and don't know how to say thank you. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill our hearts with deep thankfulness. Show our friends how much you, God, are doing for them. And we especially want to pray today for those five people that we have mentioned. Amen. Perhaps you'd like to continue to Pray more for the five friends that you've chosen.